Well, hello friends. This can only mean that this is going to be a fantastic week and we are victorious overcomers. That is what I am saying that this means. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. Welcome to Large Family Meals of the Week and it's all gonna be fantastic. I have plans, it probably won't go that way, but here we go, let's do this. And so here we go, friends. I am continuing to work through different items that we have big projects home canning. And I, I'm not using all of it. I know some people are concerned, Jamerell, you're working so hard canning all that and you're using it already. But the thing is, I'm canning it to help save me time on other days. And also, I'm using some of my home canned items already so I can practice using them. I mean, what is this? like if I want to make beef stroganoff without having to take the time on this night to cook the meat first and I can just put it in my slow cooker and warm it through and I'll show you exactly how I'm going to use this beef stroganoff. So what I'm doing here friends is I am doing some beef stroganoff. I'm going to do a homemade cream of mushroom soup instead of using canned mushroom soup but that's what I have put in this before, but we are gonna also make it homemade. And I'm putting in the beef tips that we canned already. Now these are gonna go in the slow cooker for a few hours. The meat is already cooked though, so it will heat everything through. And we're gonna add in our soup. And then towards the very end, we'll add in some sour cream. And now I'm using my onion chopper and I am, I am just slamming down on that. <laughs> and I am getting the onions chopped quickly here. And then we are going to saute those up before going any further. So I've learned I've just had to really slam this onion slicer around, but hey, it did it. And I have some rinsed mushrooms here as well. And I'm just going through chopping these up further so they don't look like mushrooms if you know what I mean you know what I mean wink wink kids eat my stroganoff too and so these mushrooms will cook down but uh, yeah just be smaller mushroom pieces and I continue to love my 17 inch lodge cast iron pans I use them so many days. Many times, as you know, I'll use two at one time. Now I am sauteing up my onions here. I only need one of these pans on this evening. We're going to do our homemade cream of mushroom soup now, which is an easy variation. Now I'm just putting in the mushrooms. We got the onions going. too far away from me, uh, recipe direction wise. I'm out of butter, it's so sad, sorry. We got the fan on, we got math happening, we got a lot going on back here. Anyway, I'm out of butter. My freezer reserve butter, the two boxes of Azure butter that I bought this fall, it's all gone. So, need to do a big several month butter bulk order. But I do have some ghee and so I used this to saute the vegetables in. Also, I didn't mean to dump a fourth of a cup of garlic in. I was thinking more two tablespoons, but also my other tablespoon had ghee on it and I didn't have it in me to walk for another, for another tablespoon. You saw those eggs, it's been a day already. So I dumped it, thought I could eyeball it. It was a bunch more, but that's okay. Garlic is our friend. I'm also, uh, once I get this going, I'm gonna add in about a cup of flour and then I also have some beef broth here to help us pull all this together and then salt and pepper. Uh, towards the very end, I'm gonna add in, uh, you can do half and half, I happen to have some heavy cream that needs used up, so I'm gonna use heavy cream in this today. And now I'm just adding my flour to my pan. I'm going to just cover my onions and mushrooms in it. We will get that cooking down, and then we're going to add in some of our home canned broth and go from there.
And now I'm just stirring my beef stroganoff in my slow cooker here. And I'm also going to add in our homemade cream of mushroom soup. That is going to be our sauce. And we're going to, yep, I scraped the pan there some more. And then we are going to stir that soup up with the meat very well. And hey, some of these things may not go together, but that's never stopped me. I had some sweet potatoes that we needed to use up. So I am doing this batch of sweet potatoes in the slow cooker. I have some family members who will have a sweet potato with, or they might have a sweet potato for their dinner. Doing these sweet potatoes in batch now will be side items for many upcoming meals. Okay, so we have our Wednesday afternoon configuration happening here. I need to get the mashed potatoes going. We also still need to do grammar and spelling and have our read aloud time. And then my friend is coming to deep clean my house for me while I'm reading to my children. And I appreciate that friend. So it's also, you hear other juggling. We have worker men here still working on our first big bathroom renovation. They are painting today, I believe. I saw boxes of flooring. They're doing a lot. A lot is going on with that. So, so she has less to clean. And of course, we're down a bathroom. So pressure on my mom head is I want to make sure like we need to eat dinner before we go out. But I also want to give her the kitchen and get us out of here. So I'm just saying I'm coordinating. I'm taking this time. Some kids just got done playing chess. We also just got done with some rounds of Candyland and Monopoly for a little afternoon time. All that to say, I'm gonna go ahead and drain my potatoes and get them in the pot and get these cookies. Sorry, kid just interrupted me to tell me it was not Monopoly. Candyland and trouble. It was trouble, it was big trouble. I need that paperwork to stay where I have it for daddy. Thank you. Multitasking mama. So I'm gonna get the potatoes in the pot ready to roll and at some point I'll turn the heat up on them more and mash them within, I don't know, when can I even swallow my spit? <laughs> but anyway, at some point during read aloud time. And so I did add a little xanthan gum to my slow cooker beef stroganoff just to thicken it up a bit. You could use some cornstarch if you would like, or you don't have to thicken it a little bit any way it goes, that's fine. And so here I have never made mashed potatoes with home canned potatoes before, but I was excited to try it. I've heard mixed reviews. I also want to do, of course, potato salad and other soups using these home canned potatoes. I do use 12 jars on this day because again, this is who I am, <laughs> the big batch mama. I like to make enough. I never ever cook for just one meal. There's always future meals in mind. So these potatoes actually turn out tasting absolutely delicious. We loved the taste of them and everybody ate them over about three days. I will say, you know, they didn't look like fluffy, nice fluffy mashed potatoes, but they did taste very good. They weren't thick or pasty either, they just were not quite the perfect mashed potato consistency, but taste-wise, they were delicious, and no one had any complaints about them, so I was glad to give this a try. So now I'm going to do the mashed potatoes in this 16-quart Dutch oven. I just spray it down with some olive oil first, and then I get all the potatoes over there. Of course, I see now, you dropped a little bit in the back there. Get that one piece of potato. <laughs> anyway, well, maybe I do, maybe I do. I also added in several jars of broth, and all I'm doing right now is I just want everything to heat through.
Alrighty, so lots of things going on in the kitchen right now. This is how our stroganoff looks. I also just threw some sweet potatoes in another slow cooker. This is my, hey look, we meal prep, prepping ahead because might have some folks who want them tonight, but if not, they'll be ready for lunch tomorrow. So the stroganoff is done. I am going to add a cup of sour cream to it now. And then also, if you'd like to thicken this up, you can of course use cornstarch. I have some xanthan gum that I'm gonna use, and that's also a good thickener. So I used a little bit of the sour cream that was left in that tub. I did not put that whole tub in there, but I had about a cup left in there. And so that is what I added to the slow cooker beef stroganoff. And also I've got some help here. We're using our masher on the potatoes. Good morning, it's a happy birthday here. Happy birthday day. Yesterday we had our mashed potatoes and our stroganoff and our green beans and we went to church. We got to bed at a good time. I mean, who are we? Anywho, today I am going to use this morning because it's not our typical school day. Although I am going to read to the kids and they're going horseback riding on a big trail ride. The education continues, but birthday focused today. What I'm doing this morning, something that I don't normally do on a regular school day, hence why I get to get it done today, is I'm gonna do a bunch of big batch French toast. It's been a while since we've had fresh French toast in our freezer, and it is so helpful to be able to just get out a gallon Ziploc bag of French toast, and hey, breakfast is done for a morning or two. So I have two, four, six, I have seven loaves of just cheap, great value bread that I'm going to do big batch French toast with. I also have some Ezekiel bread that I'm gonna do some French toast with. I'm going to first off just get what my kids actually need for breakfast done and feed and let them eat while I just continue. I've got a YouTube video I have to finish watching through it. It's like an hour and a half one. So anyway, I'll be able to just stand here and pump through the French toast while they eat and get ready for their big trail ride. They need to leave for their trail ride in a couple hours. So we should have time to still do read alouds today. Yay. We haven't been able to get as much read aloud time in this week, although we've been progressing with many other great things. So I thought we could do read alouds. Then they will go on their trail ride. I'm actually staying home with the three youngest children, the almost two-year-old, the five-year-old, and the eight-year-old. We are gonna go out to Pop Shelf, Walmart, and just do a few last-minute birthday day things. Today is my nine-year-old daughter's 10th birthday. Double digits, it's a big deal, so she wanted to go on a big trail ride, and that's where her and her older brothers and sisters and my mama are going, and they'll, they'll be gone for several hours doing that. So we're gonna get the big party and such ready while they are gone. But again, to the big batch French toast first this morning. And so yesterday, you know, if the egg bowl fell out, so that's four of our homegrown chicken eggs. We probably have, I don't know, four to six more this morning. The girls are just getting going. We do have some store-bought eggs. I actually got several cases of these 30 eggs at Sharp Shopper a few weeks ago, so we've been mixing and matching here. And then for the THM French toast, I'm going to make that with uh, some liquid egg whites that I had. If you are a THM lady, if that means anything to you at all, the THM French toast is considered an e-meal, and I also like to make that in bulk when I can. Yay! And as always, I save my eggshells and I feed them back to my chickens. I don't bake them or anything. I usually crush them up and whatever scraps I'm giving them will have the leftover eggshells. That's just another way for them to get some calcium to help strengthen their eggshells. We don't have an issue with weak eggs, but again, it's just something that could be reused. I know some folks have told me that they reuse their eggshells on their gardens, and that's another great idea. I really wish I could hand whisk eggs this fast, haha. -ha. But anyway, I'm glad to take the time on this morning to get some big batch French toast done. French toast is one of those things that when I don't have it, I miss it. And I'm always glad when I take the time to get seven to 10 loaves already made up and in the freezer because it is such a simple, large family freezer meal and big batch freezer meal that I can just grab a bag or two out. And then there we go, breakfast is done for the next two mornings. Of course, always you can add in fruit, you can add in yogurt, you could add in any other side items that you would like along with your breakfast. I mean, hey, even for extra fun, you could 
do a little bit of sprinkled powdered sugar or sprinkled cinnamon. Lots of different ways that you can fix it up. You can also do toppings such as if you wanted to do strawberry jam or peach preserves. Lots of yummy things that you can top your French toast with. French toast is one of those big batch freezer meals that of course does not have to be done on a freezer cooking day. I mean, if it's just something I feel like doing and I have the opportunity to make, then I will definitely take that opportunity and get some in the freezer because we appreciate that French toast. Some other easy ones that I can do in a big batch like this, of course, are pancakes and also blueberry kit pancakes, chocolate chip pancakes, variety of pancake food fun. That is something nice and easy to do. Now something I've done a bunch of in the past that I have not done in recent years is freezer biscuits. I know back at the forest house we did biscuits often. We did biscuits with our big batch cooking and our freezer meals and it's been a bit. I don't think I have done. Have I done freezer biscuits here at this house in the last in the last three years, I don't know, but that's something on my upcoming list. If we can get several, several dozen in the freezer, I don't know, six dozen, 10 dozen, how many dozens of biscuits do we need? That actually gives me enough to sprinkle out for my family for upcoming meals as well. And we love biscuits and gravy, and it's even better with homemade biscuits. Okay, so hey, does my family help me? Uh, yeah, I had some mama stuff I had to go attend to. We also just got some notice that the power company has decided that now, today is the day, without our promised 24 advance notice, that they need to flip the power off for a few hours. They're gonna flip the switch on Thursday. Classic Brian Regan joke there, if you're a Brian Regan fan. It is Thursday, and so it's flip switching day and they're getting ready to cut the power off. So we are almost done. Liam's got, oh, maybe, hopefully, try to get these on the, uh, while those are finishing up, try to get these last ones on. We'll see, but anyway, he's been helping me. He's done, I think we had seven loaves. He's done at least the last three while I had my, my mama business to attend to, but very helpful. I'm just gonna, now I'm all up in your business, now that you're helping me, now that I can be back in this room. Um, yeah, let, let me just get my fingers in there. Can, can the both of us work, Liam? We'll see. Oh, also, let me tell you all, do not try this at home. I realize these griddles, see I got these griddles new with the kitchen. You all tell me what to do, because that's how I like to do things. Um, these griddles were heating up my countertop, not a little bit, like a lot, hot to the touch, burning, lava fire. So I'm going to have to get a bigger, like heat resistant mat to put under these. I have some small heat resistant things, but not big enough for both of these griddles. So do not try this at home. Okay, I just went ahead and put two towels under it for now. I mean, I'm in here, I'm supervising, but don't do that. I'm sure I'm breaking like all the laws right now, but I'm just being real with you, this is what I'm doing. Uh, these are quartz countertops, and I do have a friend of mine where her air fryer busted her quartz, and of course they're under, oh, here Liam, I'm sorry, I'm talking, you're flipping with your fingers this time. Um, I should get back out of the way, here you go, okay. Anyway, her uh, air fryer busted her countertop, and of course it's under warranty, but then it just takes time to like, who has time for that? So. Things have been going well. I mean, obviously in this Mega Mama kitchen, we cook and do things all the time, but I do have to be aware of heat and things. So anyway, that's our story. I'm waiting for the lights to go out on us. We were just saying, 
away and power out. Yep, there it goes. So again, not as bad as when they wanted to do it for a full day a few weeks ago when I was trying to have my big batch cooking cannon. I was doing something day. But they still told me they'd give me 24 hours notice. But it works out well because we were going to Walmart anyway. Okay. So what does stink though is that our contractor worker folks are here working on a really nice fancy bathroom. And they had like their saws out front. They were doing things. They're working on trim. And we weren't able to give them advance notice either. So they'll figure it out. They got other stuff they can do for the hour. You really don't need a flashlight right now, sweetie. Yes, I do. <laughs> anyway, I'll show you the bathroom too. Okay, so here's our French toast out now that is cooling. And then I will get this packaged up. Also, if we talk here in the dark. So I'm not worried about my freezers and such if the power is going to be out you know one hour even four hours or 12 hours as long as the freezer doors are kept shut everything is going to be fine in there and that is the sound of sawing so thankfully our workers that are here today um, they have some battery stuff you can see like the saws and stuff set up there but thankfully it looks like he's got some milwaukee tools and he's got enough for an hour or so i just feel bad because he didn't know and we didn't know okay power we have we have light power is on the french toast cooled so i am putting well i guess i'm not gonna put this all in the freezer i will probably save one bag out and then i will also save my thm french toast so we're putting five bags in the freezer this will be five breakfasts for my family um i don't know i'm gonna say over the next eight weeks, we'll have French toast five times. I know people like to know how long it lasts when we'll use it. You'll just have to come back and watch my large family meals of the week videos. And uh, you're gonna see this French toast reappear, yay. Okay, we got birthday party. Birthday party fun in the works. That's a requested ice cream cake, strawberry cake, cupcake, strawberries. Nice to have a birthday near Valentine's Day flowers. And then we have some strawberry sparkling cider I thought the kids might like to try. So this is birthday party on the day of the birthday. Birthday party fun going down. Okay, we had to make a run into Top Shelf. This is funny. As for me and my house, we will serve tacos. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's taco about it. They got some cute stuff in here today. Every day. Okay, we're also going to get one million balloons here. I guess I should make sure we get 10. So we are back from that afternoon shopping adventure. We went to Walmart and to Pop Shelf. Pop Shelf, like that's gonna be my new place for birthday balloons. I dig, I got 10. They are adorable. What's not adorable is the wind when I came out of the store was not my friend. And now they're all a tangle. So Travis is good at those kind of things. He's good at strength straightening out the tangled messes. So he's gonna work on those and I'll show them to you. But let me show you uh, the other things I got in my little mini haul here. Okay, so we were at a laundry detergent and this is how I buy stuff. I buy four to six at a time. So there's four laundry detergents. I like to get it at Costco, but Walmart's just fine. This is the shredded cat food for Friendly. He will be so thankful. He's getting older. We tried him on pate and mixing it with water. He's just, he is not happy. So he can eat the shreds. He just, he lifts it on his little paw and eats it off his paw. Anyway, he's, he's been missing this. Also, we got these beautiful roses. It's nice when your birthday's, you know, if you're a pre-Valentine present because that's what I always say, Amelia was an early Valentine's baby because all these beautiful flowers are available and they have a full vase in here, so I'm gonna take those out. We got sparkling blush. I thought there were strawberries involved, made from apples and cherries. Okay, but anyway, the kids like the sparkling cider on New Year's, so I thought it'd be fun for her birthday. I didn't put the cheese balls in the cart. We can ask Travis about that. At Pop Shelf, I got another basket. We have some colored blocks and the, the box for them is broken. And I got a really nice basket the other week at Home Goods. Let me show you that. 
we go. So I got this to hold their magnetic tiles. And so I was gonna put the colored blocks in there and then we have that box that those blocks came with, the boxes and the, the blocks, right? All the B words. Anyway, I'm gonna put that new basket over here in this area. And there Naomi just got the fun Spirit Horse birthday banner up. Also in Pop Shelf, sorry, I guess this is a mix of Pop Shelf and Walmart. I got this nice little oval tray, $5. I was just thinking of putting strawberries on it. It'd be pretty. They had the power wash refills there. I know it's probably like 50 shades of death, haha. -ha. But anyway, um, I like using the little power wash spray. And so I got those refills. These are some sibling gifts. Daniel and Benjamin each picked one of these color your own DIY pillows for Amelia. Then Benjamin also at Walmart picked out Amelia kitty treats for her kitty. Benjamin picked out the butterfly. Daniel picked out the horse. Daniel also got Amelia this roll with it journal and then these pens. And then I got her these nail decals as well. Um, there's just some spirit horse birthday party decorations we got on Amazon. Extra whisk, cause I always need them. My Nut Pods coffee creamer in bulk. Some pizza for non-crab leg eaters for this evening and some strawberries. We got three cakes, but again, birthday cake for a lot of people. Um, and then Benjamin picked out the cupcakes for her as well. She wanted an ice cream cake and a cheesecake and that little strawberry cake looked pretty. I have three boxes of crab legs. Now that I got at some point over the holidays, we never got to them. And I got these two boxes also. This was her birthday meal request. So let me see here. I've got 10 pounds of crab legs total. And then also at Walmart, we got this cute little Valentine's Day plushie. And then there's Travis working on the balloons. But you can see, so we've got like this really, oh, 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 trying to get it. Really cute sloth. Okay, says it's my birthday. Anyway, once he fixes it, it's that man-dad engineering skills with this tangle. I'll show them to you. But in here, though, we have some other birthday presents. I got these at Cracker Barrel maybe two months ago. It was a Briars Farm play set. And then, ooh, come on, pillow. Life is good, but horses make it better. That's appropriate. Here's, come on out. There's the Briar horse set, and it has like a little sheep and a chicken and a dog and a horse. Oh, and a water trough. Oh, and a chicken. I hope so. Oh, yes. Okay, I said that. Yeah. And then Travis is already working on birthday stuff, paper, many more things in these Amazon boxes. Okay, so we got a lot of kitchen noise going on, but here is how our little evening home party is looking. We got our spirit horse decor and the roses. I was able to fit three pounds of strawberries on that pretty red platter. At first it was two pounds and it was like, come on, we, we can stack it higher, we can do this. So that is nice. There's the presents down there. Here's how the balloons turned out, so cute. So these were $2 each for these nice helium balloons. The little ones were two for a dollar. And so, I mean, that sloth is $2 good. He even has a party hat and a party favor. And then the llama, I mean, $2 good. Don't don't show us the, your rear end there, llama. There you go, llama. And then down here, we have a donut, a $2 good donut. So what did I spend? Two, four, six, eight, and then one, two, three, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There you go. Eleven dollars for birthday party balloon happiness. I think it turned out nice. Like I said, they also did a big trail ride about an hour and a half or so away today and had all kinds of other birthday fun. But this is our evening event.
So actually on the birthday evening, we had been planning to do the crab legs. We ended up not doing them on the birthday evening, but we did them a few days later because we were out of butter <laughs> and everybody was very happy with the pizza, but we had been planning and planning, so we did work that out a few days later and I just boiled all of these crab legs and we just had ourselves an extended birthday crab leg party extravaganza. I had ordered the different little crab crackers and forks and little tools to dig the meat out of the crab legs because we have several crab fans here and so we enjoyed this on this evening. And then yay for Mr. Travis yet again. He poured that pot for me through the colander there and drained it all out. He is not a crab leg eater, but he will support our crab leg adventures. And there's some of the little tools I had bought off Amazon. So we can save up boxes of crab legs again in the future and do this again. Maybe we'll do it a couple times a year. And now on this day, good morning, it's a new day. I have some slow cooker soup that I had set out from the freezer. I was just gonna warm that again in the slow cooker. I have another pack of strawberries and we are continuing to gather more chicken eggs. So on this morning, I'm going to get this soup going and that's just a soup that me and maybe two or three of my family members would probably have a bowl of it for lunch. It's the Trim Healthy Mama Trim Train Soup, I believe they call it. Uh, just a very simple taco soup, but of course I add even more vegetables to it. And so I made that in January and I was able to freeze two or three gallon bags of it. So every other week or so I pull a bag out and that will be lunch for those who would like it on this day. Here's my breakfast. I did my poached eggs and my strawberries and mm -hmm, we have other other adventures I'm still cleaning up from on uh, from my weekend cooking adventures. We have our blocks out on this morning and some different storybooks. We're getting our new day going. And then for the rest of the family, on this morning, I have my sausage and apple bake freezer meal, and I'm going to get that in for them. Of course, again, there's so many of us, some might choose to have a bowl of cereal, or they might choose to do their own eggs. That's kind of on them, as I like to say. Uh, but on that morning, I got a freezer meal breakfast in. I had to frost it, and where are we here? So now here we are, another day, another dinner. These are two bags of these sweet and spicy meatballs that we love so much. And so when we do these meatballs, I also do some brown rice. We will do the rice in the Instant Pot, but I go ahead and get two of the gallon bags of the meatballs going in the slow cooker a few hours before dinner, so they will be heated through for dinner time. Time. I had some mama work things I had to do on this afternoon and I was very glad that dinner would be done for us and I was hoping always hopes and dreams you know I, I live for leftovers I was hoping that by doing two of the bags plus the brown rice that we would also have enough for the following day and here I am showing you what the sausage and apple bake looks like with some strawberries for breakfast on this morning. So sorry for throwing a bunch of different meals for you <laughs> at one time, uh, but you know, that's how it goes sometimes when I'm filming multiple days, multiple meals. But now we are back to where I am going to rinse my brown rice and then I'm going to get my brown rice going in the inside pot. I've also done brown rice in the slow cooker and of course on the stove top, uh, but I rinse it first. Uh, you can also do this with white rice or jasmine rice or even quinoa, just depending on what you have available. And so usually what I do is four cups of rice and eight cups of water and then I put my Instant Pot lid on and it has a rice button and I hit the rice button and it makes the rice and we are all happy, yay. 
And now that the water's in, again, I just have to put my lid on. Now I've also used broth in place of water before. There we go, the Instant Pot is going to do the work for us. Alrighty, so here's an example of Meals on the Go. I was busy recording an over hour long voiceover this afternoon. And so Travis and the kids already ate, but I've got my, my mama meal on the go, go. Don't worry, Travis is driving. But anyway, this is the steamed brown rice and a bunch of those delicious sweet and spicy meatballs. All the kids loved them. Do y'all love the meatballs? Yeah, they're delicious. They're delicious. They're delicious. I'm hearing, hearing from my biggest critics that they are delicious. So anyway, just showing you dinner tonight as we run out the door. And here we are another morning. And I guess if I was good, I have a friend who says that she judges her day based on how well her eggs go in the morning. I think it's her omelet. Maybe we should start judging my day on how my poached eggs in the microwave go. Uh, so that, that did not go well. On this day, we have our homeschool group day. And so I am getting all the food that we have already prepped together to make this day of going out to our homeschool group and homeschool group extra classes and clubs and fun with friends. Oh, well, food is at least mostly prepped, right? So I have two different casseroles that I had brought up that I was going to set out. And also I brought up the meatballs and the base to do a slow cooker Italian wedding soup. And I also brought up two bags of our breakfast pizza bagels and I was going to put those pizza bagels here on our trays. I just looked up my heat time again and I'm going to line those on my baking trays, get them in the oven. Several of my kids ate these in the kitchen this morning and then several grabbed some to eat on the way as we were running out the door. Everybody packed their own lunch on this day. Who even are we? I also packed my lunch. I got some spinach in there and broccoli and other salad components. And then I was taking a Zevia and also packing two of those triple zero yogurts that I like. And this was going to be my mama lunch for our homeschool group all day out. I mean, we get home and it's basically dinner time. Here's some extra zevias and different lunches that the kids had packed. Most of their lunches fit in the boxes. One of my kiddo fit more, fit some snacks and stuff in a Walmart bag for themselves. There's some water bottles in there. I'm putting my salad in. And then we just take that big bag to homeschool group. Here we are, this is Tobin's box and he just loves Loves, loves, loves. Looking at those little monster trucks. He keeps closing his box just to see the trucks on them. So these little lunch containers are working well for us when we actually use them, right? And hey, a really cool kid takes their antique accordion with them to homeschool group. Am I right? I'm right. Aha. Uh -huh. I think that was a 1920s accordion we found at uh, the big flea market. Anyway, now we're looking outside. We got some roosters, a couple extra roosters, and one of my hens are out in my very backyard area. Usually they stay in our fenced barnyard area to free range. These guys were just doing a little extra exploring. I just think they're so pretty. I love looking at my chickens. Again, I've been I've been a chicken mama for 15 years now. So, they are definitely one of my favorite creatures and even this crop of roosters that I have. I just I love looking at them. So, on this evening, this is a few days later, and I am going to also use some home canned ingredients to do some beef and vegetable stew. We're going to use some home canned potatoes, some home canned corn, home canned carrots. We have some beef stew meat. I also grabbed, I was like, okay, we can use some of this tomato juice we canned recently, even some black beans. I also get the freeze dried squash. I am just like, how many different things can I fit in this very nutritious soup? Let's just see how much we can fill up this 16 quart Dutch oven. No problem here. I mean, hey, 
I'm not using the 30 quart pot. I'm not using the 60 quart pot. <laughs> so this is actually a very sensible amount, but should at least get us leftovers for lunch and hopefully at least for this to be a dinner side item the following day. And since I did can my carrots in like long carrot stick fashion, um, they're not too mushy. Obviously they're soft. Uh, so I'm just going with my hands there and breaking the carrots in half or even into thirds. And next time we can carrots, we will cut them in little circles and can them that way um, or not. It's okay, either way, we're definitely using these with no issues, that's for sure. And of course, the life and times of uh, my island, of being Jay Morrell's Kitchen Island, I had big cooking projects on this weekend, so that's why there were several days in between me filming this Meals of the Week video. And so the island is just all jammed up with all the pots and pans and canners and a strawberry deal that Travis also surprised me with. So the island was deep and wide, and then we wash things up and we get it put away, and then the island will have a little break, and then it's time to do it all over again. So here I am now, I am just stirring up our beef and vegetable stew, and look at that, some of our home canned tomato sauce. That was my one jar that did not seal, and so I'm gonna go ahead and add that in too, because why not? It'll all work out in the end. Now when this video comes out, you all have not seen yet our big home canning, the 380 pounds of tomatoes extravaganza. But that video will be coming out here uh, either after this one or two more after this one. It's coming up. But on this day, I had just finished that weekend. That is why we have all these <laughs> washed tools on the island and you can even see all the home canned jars far in the distance there on the big 16 foot table. It was quite the adventure and as I always say, we did it, I'm proud of us. And so I'm doing a pretty good job here, working on filling my pot to the brim, cause you know that's how we roll. I'm just gonna give everything a good stir and then we will warm it and cook it through from here and have it for dinner on this evening. I'm looking at my freeze-dried products there. I have my freeze-dried squash. We add a whole jar of that. We also add in a whole jar of freeze-dried peppers. And we recently finished freeze-drying the last of the winter squash. And I go ahead and add that in too. So that's why I'm not just calling this a beef stew. This is definitely a beef and vegetable stew because we are just cramming in all that we possibly can. And then I just need to stir it all up. And even the freeze-dried items will blend with the soup and cook up beautifully. And friends, I know that you have been following me on our 1963 house renovation journey and we finally got to the next big projects after doing the Big Mega Mama Kitchen the absolute next area in our house that has demanded our attention is our bathrooms. So our main hall bathroom is 97% done. I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you because again, we are so close. And if you look through my other Large Family Meals of the Week videos from the last few weeks, you'll see this progress. They're gonna start on our second upstairs bathroom later this week, and then we'll have brand new bathrooms because we had a third brand new bathroom done in our basement. Has it been two years ago now? Anyway, we'll have three new bathrooms. That'll be amazing. And then we'll move on to the next thing on the renovation list. So it is a wider door. We had this bathroom done handicap accessible. Um, you can see like, you know, we've got some spackle on the wall and stuff where they had to remove the, the smaller door. It was like the size, uh, but I think this is a 36 inch door. Um, you can see upcoming projects. Like, you know, we'll need, we need a whole house paint job again. We got paint chip in there. And uh, this is the color we had done when we moved in, but I want the whole house done in the color of this bathroom. Okay, so big reveal. 
So we have agreeable gray on the walls and I think agreeable gray, I'm going to wrap my life in it just like I'm going to wrap my life in these floors. Um, this color is called Online by Sherwin-Williams. I know many of you all asked for this color when we moved in and had this painted. Um, but anyway, as we work through other whole house renovations, I'm going to just go with agreeable gray and white trim because I, I can add color to it. Anyway, this is the vanity that we went with. Now, this is sticking out because there is um, some plumbing back there and they're gonna actually, this is the stuff that still needs to be done. They're gonna adapt that that back little drawer there to close. Um, I feel like, how do I do this? Do I show you the whole bathroom first? Again, it looks so much better than it did. So that's gonna close here in a few days. This vanity, the the reason that this vanity was picked, I mean, I think it looks nice. I'm ha definitely the nicest bathroom vanity I have ever owned in my whole adult life, okay? This one got picked because it would fit and it was in stock at Lowe's. That's the story of my life. Will it fit? <laughs> Is it in stock? I don't want to wait forever for anything to come in. So the uh, it had this built in and we added the hardware. Obviously there's no mirror here yet. Uh, Travis did the, the new lighting. I don't know if that'll show up on camera, but Travis got two mirrors. So there's going to be a mirror over each sink, which will be lovely. Um, this Hobby Lobby accessory is going to go over the toilet there. This Hobby Lobby picture is going to go up there. Um, we did nice new little soap dispensers. I was happy because this is like a nice standard double sink vanity size. Our other one came out a lot farther. So now we can fit like, we, we need a, a good size trash can in the bathroom. So we can fit a trash can in here. We haven't moved into these drawers yet. We're still waiting for this to be done. Uh, but anyway, so again, agreeable gray, uh, new toilet paper holder. So in here, we have a nice double closet and I was glad we were able to keep it. Another thing they have to do is um, I have nice deep shelves that go in this thing and that still needs to be done. So we just have some paint and there's a blind that we're gonna hang on the window, some accessories. Okay, so here's the big shower. And I will say, cause we talked about it being handicap accessible. We have a family member that visits us often that's in a wheelchair and they use this bathroom how it was. So they still, another thing the contractor's doing is they're coming back to do a handrail there. But anyway, in this shower, and again, this shower is also Travis hopes and dreams and you can see some things are being moved in but I said this is like a nice hotel shower and it is done and I picked the tile for it again I just I just want a nice neutral base to life <laughs> if we're doing things fresh so we wanted uh, just a nice big shower and that is what we got and then this is a better homes and gardens from the Walmart again I thought that was Nice no, and neutral. No, I'm not a neutral girl in my heart. I love color, obviously, H hints the red, orange, and yellow. But I feel like this particular color scheme, I can add to it. And it is fresh and it is clean. And again, this is the nicest bathroom that we have ever had. So the next one is going to be same colors, same thought. It's a smaller bathroom. I'm not going with the whole uh, built-in custom tile shower. It's just gonna be fresh like Lowe's insert, insert tub. But even this morning, Tobin was in a bubble bath and four tiles fell. <laughs> not, not like from on high, from around the base, but it just showed like the 1963 original bathrooms are slowly crumbling on us. So that bathroom begins next week. No, end of this week and we're so excited. So there you go, besides hanging the blind, putting up the mirrors, things that Travis will do, hanging up my pictures, and then we've got to move stuff back in. But this bathroom, like I say, it's 97% done. And again, we're, we're happy. I think it took them, I feel like it took them about two weeks, maybe three. Um, but again, yay, fresh bathroom. Now to just, you know, make the rest of the house match, but we're getting there. I'm like, oh, that's a, a big stain on that carpet. Who knows, but eventually these carpets are coming out 
and it'll just be these fresh floors. And then last but not least, I will show you how, hello Tobin, hello silly. This is how our beef vegetable stew that we'll call it has turned out. This has been simmering and cooking on low for a while. So we have, oh, I don't know, 40 pounds of strawberries <laughs> that we got a great deal on that are going to be the side item with everything that we eat this week. So we will be eating strawberries as our dessert with our beef stew. I'm sure we will also get out some bread and butter, but that is dinner tonight and it's all from our own home canned food.